Good morning. I'm Frédéric Westier. I'm working at the Free University of Brussels, but not this one, not the French-speaking one, but the Flemish fork of it, main <laughs> campus being one kilometer from here. I'm one of the founders of the Open Patent Office, and of course, um, people that love freedom of software and openness are not really so happy with the grant, uh, the state-granted monopolies. Eh? Patents are state-granted monopolies. Besides the ethical issues, it's also a big problem practically. It's very hard to write software or to even develop a web shop without violating any of these 20 uh, patents covering web shops. Some s patents are too stupid to be true. For example, slide to unlock is actually a software implementation of a centuries old ID. It's not only in the patent, in the software world, that's a problem. In the, medicine, in the medical world, patients are dying. Like Richard Stallman said, if you lobby for patent enforcement on expensive life-saving drugs in poor countries, you should be charged for genocide. In the mobile world, everybody is attacked by others with patents. And if you're a big company, you can probably make a deal with cross-licensing, or you can counter sue. Quite new problem is actually the patent trolls. You can't make a deal with them, you can't counter sue them, because they are non-practicing entities. They produce nothing, they sell nothing, so you cannot attack them. Patents are not cheap to obtain. Maybe you say, okay, I don't like patents, so they shouldn't be cheap, they should be extremely expensive, but this is a problem for small organizations and individuals. What about fair competition? The big costs, okay, there are renewal, well, there are um, registration costs for patents, there are renewal costs for patents, but the big cost is your legal cost for a legal advisor to write the patents such that they are not invalidated by prior art, so you don't write too broad, but also don't write too narrow because you want to block the competition as much as possible. Well, probably not you, you, but the organizations that try to get patents. So, also patents are written in a difficult legal language nowadays. Okay. It seems that with these costs, together with certainly with the litigation costs, actually the average profit of a patent today is less than zero, except in the chemical pharmaceutical sector, and that's because a molecule is easy to define exactly. In other sectors, our stuff is defined more loosely, and that raises a lot of more ground for conflicts. So is a patent a good idea for you? Take this into account. So actually patents are a tax on innovation. Some researchers say that at least a tax, that it is at least a tax of around 12% on innovation. In the biomedical sector, some researchers say patents are actually slowing down innovation with around 30%. Also, patents nowadays are too vague to learn from. Patent lovers will say, yeah, patents are a trade-off between um, giving a little bit of monopoly during a little bit of time, 20 years, for in return getting the knowledge of the companies eh, to avoid that they keep everything secret. And they will say, patent databases are huge knowledge databases. Even in my university, Patent officers say, don't forget to look for knowledge in the patent databases. <laughs> but actually, researchers don't do that. Because patent databases, did you try to read a patent? Patents are almost impossible to understand. Hmm? So it's time to fix patents. Since long, according to many. So let's see what kind of solutions exist and if this is enough. 
Thumbs up if you lobby for good patent reform, like abolishing software patents. It's a long struggle. If you have patents, a good idea is to join a patent pool, a defensive patent pool. One around Linux is the Open Invention Network. On the picture you see Deb Nicholson, who is a very active uh, speaker from uh, a speaker at FOSDEM. There is somebody else from the Open Invention Network in the room. So, great idea. There was the previous speaker, another defensive patent pool, a lot network. Good if you have patents. What can you do to avoid patents? You want to avoid that somebody else gets a patent on your ID. I loved the previous speaker mentioning that there was an initiative to kill patents before they are granted in the application phase in the US. I hope he's right because there used to be the peer to patent initiative and that is a historic initiative of the United States Patent Office. So I hope there's still a way to do it during the application phase, but I'm not sure. <laughs> a quite new initiative is Unpatent. They want to crowdsource IDs for invalidating bad patents. So if you think, okay, I don't like that patent, you mention them, please attack that patent, and then they will do a fundraising. If they have $20,000, they will start uh, the procedure to invalidate that patent. If you don't have a patent yet, but you have a great ID and you bring it to market, be careful. You risk to lose your freedom to operate. If somebody else gets a patent on your ID because they have the same ID or because they see you simply doing it, they could get a patent and they could block you. There was a question at the previous presentation. After the previous presentation, what can I do then? Should I take a patent? Not in this sector. But you could write a defensive publication. Just describe how your ID works. You make an enabling publication and you make sure that the patent offices can find it. So not just on your website, because then they will not even trust it that you didn't cheat with the date and so more. Um, but also don't just put it in your code, because patent offices are not reading your source code. They are also not trying your programs. So we need something better. There exist commercial initiatives for that. Research Disclosure is a journal. They have around 1,000 publications per year which is actually nothing compared to the two million <coughs> patents worldwide every year. And they have publication fees per page, so most of these defensive publications are very short, two pagers. Huh? Um, and they have a paywall for readers, so no open access. Another one, IP.com, very similar, 10,000 publications per year, so very small compared to the number of patents yearly. Publications fee, and a paywall. A great initiative was the defensive publications project by Linux Defenders. They collected, with your help, defensive publications around Linux software, a little bit broader than Linux only. The pro and they submitted it to IP.com, where you have to pay the publication fees, but they did this, this for free with sponsoring. So no paywall also to read because they republished it. The problem is they only got 156 publications since 2009, and the last one was in January 2015. I mailed them, OK, I love your initiative, but what happened? We want to do something similar. The email came back bouncing. So if there's somebody who knows about this project and the status, please tell me. So none of the current defensive publication solutions have the popularity, the impact, or the openness that the concept deserves. If I talk with, um, well, actually, if you talk with uh, whatever people, for example, in the street, and you ask what is a patent, everybody has a quite good idea. They know that it's kind of a proof that you invented something. 
But ask people about defensive publications, even researchers, they don't know. They don't know the concept, they don't know the, the term. So we need something better. Our proposal is the Open Patent Office, which is a non-profit organization, so we don't ask money for uh, publishing or for reading. And our aim is to stimulate open innovation and to strengthen the public domain. And we do this by combining the best practices of the defensive publications and the patent offices. Patent offices, their strong uh, practice is all that registration, the bookkeeping of at what date was what uh, registered. And open discussions. None of the previous projects added that. Uh, with each ID, we add the possibility to discuss these IDs. Because if IDs talk, they become smarter. If IDs have sex, new IDs are being born. So we want to stimulate this. So our motto is, protect your freedom to operate by sharing your IDs. You don't get the full protection of patents, including the aggressive possibilities to block others, but at least you have that defensive protection. Others will not be able to get patents on your ID anymore. So we want to help you with an easy publication process. On the website, you will have a guided web form where you simply mention the title, some information about yourself, or if you desire to stay anonymously, that is possible. Not with patents, but with open patents, yes. You give an abstract, a summary, background, problem statement. You mention prior art, very important. Patents should also do that, but are sometimes trying to avoid to give the crucial prior art. Give an enabling description. That's the most important part. You need to give a full description so that somebody else can implement your ID. Add figures if relevant. If you push the publication button, you get immediate publication. Of course, it's a very important that the patent offices will trust us. So we will guarantee the authenticity and the date by a date stamp. And then we can do much better than others by, for example, giving cryptographic hashes of the open patent, cryptographic signatures, blockchain is probably overkill, and we can let others do mirroring of our database. We need to make it easy for the patent offices, the traditional patent offices, to find your defensive de publications. So we'll we give them search engine, tags, and API to integrate their software. But we'll also follow the international patent classification. Not easy, even me, the first time when I tried to search for software patents in the national patent classifications, I didn't fi find them immediately. They are hidden under business methods. We give RSS feeds so that innovators that want to follow something about their own sector can easily do that. And we facilitate, of course, citations. We want to improve the quality because, of course, spammers will also like our platform. So we will stress the importance of having a good enabling description. We will do quality control post-publication. And this will probably still need some research how to do this uh, in the best way. And we will give quality metrics. An open patent that get more citations, of course, is probably a better open patent than another one. You hear me mentioning open patents, and an open patent is actually not a patent. It's like new is not Unix. Um, but the idea is, what I said, everybody knows about patents, nobody knows about defense publications. So I think we will be more popular with this little hack. We give it just a more sexy name. And it's all for stimulating open innovation. So we want, of course, open access. We will put a Creative Commons license on the text so that text can be reused, forked, but also that our database can be mirrored by others. The IDs, by publishing them with us, 
are in the public domain. So there is no thing like a patent license on these IDs. The IDs are in the public domain. And then we facilitate comments on these IDs, discussions. Maybe we enable requests for prior arts and enable requests for solutions for certain problems. But that's not the core business. Maybe we can link to uh, initiatives like um, Ask Patents and Stack Exchange. OK. And then we want to empower innovators. Huh? Patent holders are very proud of their patents. They write it in their resumes and their CVs. And we want to give something similar. They get a US patent number, a European patent number. With us, they will get an open patent number that they can cite everywhere. And we will give rankings, like the most active uh, open patent holder. So actually, open patents are defensive publications. But probably, people will mostly like to know how do open patents compare with patents. So first of all, patents are expensive to obtain, registration and renewal fees. No fees for open patents. Writing a patent is difficult because you need to avoid existing prior art. Writing open patents is very easy because actually it is trying to establish prior art. And prior art is not invalidated by prior art. So if you forgot something, some prior art, it's not a problem. Patents are often very hard to understand, written in vague legalese. We hope that the open patents will be much easier to understand, because you don't have that strategic game of blocking the competition. Right? Well, obtaining a patent is a slow process. It can often take a year before you get your patent finally granted. Here you will get immediate publication when you push the publication button. Patents, their protection is territorial. It means you need to ask a patent in every country where you want to have protection. An open patent is, of course, immediately international. If you publish your ID and it can be found everywhere, it will be accepted everywhere as prior art. Of course, patents give you both defensive and offensive protection, and open patents only give you defensive protection. So status. We are in pre-launch phase only. We have a pre-launch website. We are preparing to build, for now, a prototype website, where you can at least file your IDs, but not with all the features of the um, cryptographic hashes and so more in the beginning. Because, of course, this will need funding. It's a non-profit organization. We don't ask publication fees. We will ask donations. If you can help, is it financially or with developing or whatever, if you are enthusiastic, enthusiast, please contact us. Huh? Challenges will be, besides funding, acceptance. Acceptance by innovators. Please help us. If you have innovative ideas, start writing them out. Huh? And acceptance by the software, by the traditional patent offices, of course. We need to avoid spam, and I'm also a bit worried about all the bullshit and uh, pseudo scientific uh, submissions that we will get. But the patent offices are also getting them, and they are also publishing uh, too often pseudo scientific patents. If things get multilingual, which they should be, it's, this problem is even going to be harder, huh? how to detect Chinese bullshit. But the patent offices also have that problem. If uh, an ID is published somewhere in Chinese, will an English-speaking uh, patent office always find this? I don't think so. And then writing in the open patents is easy, but putting good metadata on it, especially uh, adding uh, international patent international patent classification metadata on it is uh, not so easy to do with crowdsourcing. So we're still finding solutions, searching solutions for that. So I'm curious for your questions, your comments, maybe support, 
You can find us there on your favorite platform, I hope. At least the most popular platforms are there. Hello. Um, first, a disclaimer. I'm Mirko Bim. I work with the Open Invention Network. So I was the guy that said, yes, these, yes. these talks are exactly what we need. Um, one comment up front, uh, I would like us to be uh, aware that we're living in a filter bubble. Um, we are in some form a minority, but we probably all here agree that patents and software are a difficult issue. Um, if you leave FOSTEM and you talk to other people in Brussels, you'll get blank stares. Um, I spoke at a conference at the uh, Joint Research Centre for the European Commission in March on the dangers of patents on software. In a room of 300 people, I was the only one speaking from this angle. Um, which means we need to get engaged also with lobbying and with uh, spreading the word. Uh, for example, the Economist articles that you quoted do not really support what you're saying. Yeah, the question comes at the end. Um, they're not called for abolishing the patent system, um, and there is no the consensus that the patent system itself is bad. Um, I think the terminology is important. Um, the, as you said, defensive publications. And the issue with uh, Linux defenders is um, Linux defenders are still there, so it's nobody's writing defensive publications. And this is kind of my question. You said you want to make it more interesting by, by giving it a better name. Um, have you got responses on, on from the open source community about um, we are interested in actually submitting and writing? Because that was our main problem. I spent ages agitating for that, and it just we never got the, the responses from that. Yeah, good remark. Uh, maybe filter bubble. But on the other hand, I talked a lot with researchers in my universities from different fields, and actually they are none of well, not, I didn't encounter uh, researchers that are fans of patents, their, their job is sharing knowledge. So they don't like the restrictions of patents. Of course, what they like is the big money that could come from them, but they are quite realistic. The patent officers in the universities are more optimistic about the possibilities of the patents. And always remind us, don't forget the possibilities of patenting. So yeah, researchers. I like this idea, and I have researchers that say, ah, yeah, okay, I'm going to start writing patents. For example, the, uh, the people from mathematics, mathematics is not patentable, and they feel like, why not? <laughs> and they love this idea, like, okay, I can write out my ideas at least at, uh, at the Open Patent Office, because we will not restrict anything, uh, because it doesn't harm if you write a defensive publication. So, yeah. I'm optimistic also because, for example, I talked to some patent attorneys and they say, oh, okay, only now I get it after your talk about Open Patent Office, that actually we patent attorneys very often have to tell our clients like, okay, for this ID, going for a patent is not the best strategy. And then they do nothing. And then the patent attorneys now think like, okay, I should mention more this defensive publication uh, possibility. So I think, yes, we have 2 million patents worldwide every year. We have around less than a percent defensive publications compared to that. I think we can do much, much better. Um, OK, it's not about abolishing all patents. It's just about making more popular the other ID, making this a game changer, making this the default thing to do in everybody's mind, or at least one of the options in everybody's mind. Thank you. Yes, hi, great initiative, and I hope it will survive a long time. But as you saw with the Linux Defender website, it, there are circumstances you cannot foresee. So um, <clears throat> you mentioned blockchain and that it would be overkill. So what I'm saying is blockchain might be the only way to um, put it out there in all eternity. <laughs> well, as long as some computers are running. But And uh, yeah, uh, my question is, why do you think blockchain is overkill and why it's not the solution? Well. In which blockchain would you put it? If you put it in the in the Bitcoin 
Well, if you put it in the Bitcoin blockchain, I think it's not big enough and fast enough. Maybe if you are very popular. Um, but it's a bit overkill that it gets distributed so much. If, if we have, okay, you can have a blockchain, a chain of proof, like you calculate the hashes. You just have to digest the document. Yes, indeed, yes. But also it costs a bit, for example, if you do it with Bitcoin. So, okay, it's not excluded the ID, it's a nice ID. This is part of the, well, the research behind it. Do we do blockchain? But if we do that, even if we do the cryptographic hashes, we have already the best solutions. The other defense publication, the commerce providers, they don't do that. The patent offices, they do, don't do that. So indeed, these are some other things, technical issues, that we can improve a lot on. So I try to do this without too much causing feedback loop. So am I right? It's technically a defensive publication with an easy to access interface, but from a technical point of view, it's, it's a defense yes. publication. Yes, it's a defensive. Legally, it's a defensive publication, but we add a lot more openness than with the current solutions. Not just open access, but also open discussion so that people can discuss, okay, nice ID, but you could add that. We have time for one more question. So uh, people just who had the questions, okay, because there are a few people who had their hands up before. Uh, yeah, I have two questions actually. So first one is simple. If, if everything works correctly, if everything is implemented and works correctly, will those be accepted as prior art? That's the first question. And the second question, will it be easier to implement things uh, avoiding the multilingual aspect? So take one language, let's start okay. from one language. I don't see why, if this is working well, it will not be accepted by the traditional patent offices. If they find your website, if they find your website, they could accept it. If they trust that the date is not cheated and so more, any publication in theory they could accept. And with all that trust that we are trying to build, probably going to be accepted. And there exists something like patent treaty where it is written which sources at least the patent officers should check, and we hope we can get in that whitelist. Uh, the second question, the multilingual. Okay, that's not for, I guess, uh, the first year. That's a bit of a challenge, but if we are growing and we have uh, maybe ambassadors in every country or in every language, this should be doable. And well, over a few years, uh, machine translation will it be will it be improving, and uh, that will probably also help. Thank you.